see the marks on here. Hey everybody, welcome back to Bruner Tuner. Today, we're back with the CT175. Last time you were with us, you would have seen that the bike had a pretty catastrophic failure in the way of blown out crank seals and some pretty bad scoring inside of the cylinder. So, in true Bruner Tuner fashion, I'm gonna do a DIY on something I have no clue about, which is honing the cylinder. Let's check it out. So we've got a few items in front of us here. Um, this is what is known as a flex hone. And this came recommended from a few different YouTube channels. Um, it seems that this is probably one of the best ways to tackle some light scratches inside of your cylinder without taking away too much material. Since we had pretty good compression in the cylinder, somewhere around 135, there was just some slightly raised or etched areas in the piston from the small amount of piston slap that I got. So we're gonna try our hand at this with the flex hone. If it doesn't work, not a big deal. We do have room to improve on the cylinder. Right now we're at a 66.5, and I think they make pistons that go up to a 68 millimeter in here. So we got some room for error. I wanna try this first before we do anything else and see if we can get this bike back up and running. Now inside the cylinder here, I'm hoping that you guys can see some of these lines that I found. Over here, you can see we got some vertical lines. These are somewhat pronounced and I can kind of feel them with a fingernail, not too much. Um, but these ones, those are fairly pronounced. I'd say this is probably the worst of what I found. Um, everything else seems to be very, very uh, minor, more just visual, not necessarily actual damage on the cylinder that I can feel. So our plan for this is to use this flex hone. Now these are meant to be an easy way to fix some imperfections without taking off a lot of material. Um, because of the way the abrasives are made, they really do a good job at getting back in the cross hatching without taking off too much material. So that's exactly what we're gonna try to do today. So yeah, the plan is we're going to take this ball hone, we're gonna go in and out uh, at a fairly quick pace, roughly 500 to 1200 RPM on this. And uh, we're gonna do it for about, uh, I guess 20 to 30 seconds. And then we'll switch directions and do 20 to 30 seconds in the other direction to get that 45 and 45 cross hatching. There is some specific flex hone lubricant you can get, um, but they say you can also use a 10W30 oil. And so that's what I'm gonna use. Also gonna put some inside of the cylinder here as well. But here you can see the angle at which this is drilling leaving that cross hatching and we'll get it wiped off and then go the other direction. Wow, it's actually looking pretty good. The only thing I'm pretty sure is not gonna come out are those deep lines on the side of the cylinder. I guess we'll just roll with it for now. See how it does. All right, let me get this cleaned up and I'll take you guys get a closer look. I tried my best to leave a good finish and overall, I think I did a pretty good job considering it's my first time doing this. You can see some solid cross hatching here. The only part I was unable to fix were the two lines from the side of the bore where the wrist pin is located. And as long as compression is good, I think we'll still have a fair shot at getting this thing running. All right, well, it's a new day. The hone on the cylinder is officially done. I've got some new parts to put on this thing. And I've also got a couple of new tools to try out to make sure we're doing this the right way. So to put this thing back together, we've got a new base gasket and a new cylinder head gasket. Probably didn't really have to replace this, but I wanted to be on the safe side and just do it anyways. And plus it's like a $10 part, so why not? Uh, but you know what's even better than brand new OEM parts is new old stock stuff from the 70s. So if you remember at the end of last video, I found that the crank seal had worked its way out. Well, back in the day, Yamaha actually put out a service bulletin that they had produced these seal retainers to go on the bikes and mine didn't have it. The CT3s should have had it from the factory, but for whatever reason, mine was missing the one on the left side of the engine. So we've got this now, we're gonna put this on and hopefully never deal with crank seals ejecting themselves again. All right, so one of the things that's important that we're gonna to wanna to do since we have rehomed this cylinder 
we're gonna to wanna to measure the piston to wall clearance on this. And according to the manual here, it wants us to measure at four different depths uh, at a right angle to the crankshaft. And as long as the difference between the maximum and minimum sizes that I get is less than 0 0.05 millimeters, I'm good. I won't have to rebore the cylinder again. So I've picked up these nifty uh, piston micrometers here. And what this does is you uh, drop it down in there. Once you get your size you want, you lock it down, pull it out, and you'll measure this distance to determine the size of your bore. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna write these down on some paper. I'm not gonna make you watch, this will be kind of boring, but I will get back and let you know if indeed our cylinder is good. All right, well, I went through a couple times, remeasured these, and they're all about 0 0.01 millimeter within each other. So I think we're good on the bore. Uh, next thing we're gonna wanna do is measure the size of the piston and make sure that our piston to wall clearance is within spec. Yep, now measuring this piston around this part of the skirt, we're at about 66.4. And then inside the cylinder at that point is about 66.45. So we're right about that 0 0.05 cylinder wall clearance. Um, in the book it says 0 0.04 to 0 0.045. So we're very, very close there. I think we'll be okay. Um, if it ends up being too much of an issue, then of course we can rebore the cylinder, get a new piston, and we'll start fresh. But I think we're, we're very, very close to being spot on, definitely well within the margin of error for my measurements. So we're gonna roll with it. We got this thing honed, we got it all cleaned up. We're gonna put this thing back together, try to get the bike started, and see how it does. If you're doing this yourself, be sure to uh, look for this arrow. I don't know if you can see it, it's very small. Um, but that arrow is gonna tell you that's pointed towards the exhaust. Now, whenever we're doing this, we wanna make sure that we line up piston rings with the piston ring pins that are gonna be on each one of these uh, indentations on these grooves. So keep an eye out for that and you'll see that there is a small notch cut into the piston ring to fit around these pins. And if you don't get those in the right spot, you will crack your piston ring. So I'm gonna have to get down low here to take a look. There it goes. Once you get it lined up, it will go on pretty smoothly. If you've got a lot of resistance, you probably are not in the right spot. Just got the engine thrown back together. Just got to get this thing timed really quick. Uh, I'm actually gonna pull this off and put that uh, that seal retainer on there. And then we'll go ahead and time it with our little Bazzetti timing tool we used before. And uh, try to crank this thing over.
All right, guys, well, that's gonna do it for this episode of Bruner Tuner. Thanks so much for joining us. With the CT175, we did get it running, but I'm just not super happy with how it's turned out. It feels like it's a little down on power and it is down slightly on compression. So maybe with some more carb tuning, we can get it back up, but I'm thinking we might end up with a new cylinder and piston. Time will tell. Until then, please consider hitting that subscribe button, stick with us for some more content, and we'll see you next time. Peace.